Hello D365 community. Today we'll be going over a scenario where we need to replenish product that is batch controlled, honoring the sellable days on the customer level. So an example of such transaction would be a sales order for a product that is batch control and has an expiration date. And we have a specific requirement for that customer that the product should not expire within 100 days, right? So anything that's below 100 days expiration period should not be sold to the customer. So uh, in D365 terms, no work should be generated for a product that is less than 100 days because the customer will not accept the product, right? So in the quick picture that I uh, drafted this morning, you can see that we have a pick bay, pick location that is at the bottom here. You can see that uh, this, is the, this is the location. The first level, you have the pick 20 days, pick 10 days and pick 30 days. Basically, this is me outlining it's same, the same product that has a different expiration date, right? So in this corner here, you can see that this product will expire in 30 days. This is, will expire in 10 and this one expires in 20, right? So. On top, you have your bulk area. So for the bulk area, this is where you store the product that uh, will require special equipment to take it from the top shelf, bring it to the pig bay on the bottom here, and then the product can be sold to the customer. So the idea here is that we never, well, in some, some designs we do, but in our uh, scenario, we never pick from the bulk location, we always do the replenishment. So we have to move the product from the bulk to the pick, and then we actually pick it from the pick and sell it to the customer, right? So uh the video that you're gonna see today doesn't actually have a solution for the problem right this is just me kind of showing with you guys sharing with you guys i know we have a solid group of subscribers already so maybe one of you has a solution for that problem or someone has experienced the similar issue and they came up with a workaround um, so i'm just gonna jump in directly to the d365 environment and show you how the system fails to uh, support the scenario mentioned by me all right, so I'm going to open D365 environment, which I'll do in a second. And uh, from this environment, you can see that we have a sales order. The sales order is for the product NXT1. So before we actually do anything, I want to quickly re review the product NXT1. So I'm going to go to the product details page and I will show you some of the setup that does matter for this video. So first one is the item model group. So here you have a little pick criteria option drop down here where you can specify how the system will handle your uh, batch when that when you do the picking or the reservation. So you either use the expiration date or the best before on the batch as your picking criteria for us will be using the expiration date, right? So this is parameter number one. And also you need to make sure that you have your shelf life period in days set on the product. Otherwise the system will uh, fail to create work, right? So you need to make sure you have this information prior or to creating these, uh, these sales order transactions. So next I wanna go to the on hand and actually view what we got here for that product. So we'll be dealing strictly with the warehouse 25 here. And you see that we have two different locations where the product resides. So one is bulk two. So this is our bulk. This is basically the top shelf that I was showing you here. So on the top and the bulk area, you have a 500 physical uh, inventory available for that product. And the expiration date, I'll show you just disregard the batch number. The expiration date for this product is, um, uh, it's actually expires today, right? So. No one wants the product. Let's say we're selling food item, right? No one, want, no one really wants to buy the product that expires today. So if the system is configured correctly, we shouldn't be getting any warehouse work for the product that expires today, right? So it's located in bulk. Number two, you have a product, same product, an XT1 that's located in the pick, pick bay, right? So this is the, the lower bay here. Uh, for a quantity of 100, and that one expires in... Uh, in 30 days, right? So 7.30, it has a 30 days uh, expiration period, right? It's, it can work for some customers. So let's say you're selling to your local customers and they don't need uh, expiration of greater than 10 days because the product is gonna be sold right away. But however, if you're selling to distributors, uh, 30 days usually will not do the job. They require more time to distribute the product to their uh, retail locations, right? So 
Once you have uh, your warehousing set up in place where you're determining that you're only picking from a pick and uh, you shouldn't be picking from bulk, you're only going to be replenishment from bulk, you can actually set up your sellable days on the customer level. Uh, so for this, I'm going to go back to our sales order. The customer that we're using for this demo is the actual US24 customer. And uh, once I'm on the customer screen, I go to setup, sell action pane, and I set up sellable days. So here you can see that I define a criteria that I need, that that customer requires 90 days until the product expires so it can be accepted by the customer, right? If you look at our on hand, none of that matches the criteria. So none of the product that we have has an, a validity of more than 30 days. This one in pick expires in 30 days. The one on top expires today. Uh, so my expectation from the system is to actually not sell anything to that customer, right? All right, so go, going back to our sales order online, we're selling to that customer quantity of one, or we're trying to sell at least, right? So the system will use a set of rules to locate the product. I'm not gonna spend too much time on the um, location directives for picking. I'll tell you that we're only picking from a pick location and uh, we're considering our badge as well as sellable days that are set on the customer. I wanna spend a little bit more time with the actual location directive for replenishment. So if the system is unable to find a product that is matching that 60 days or 99 days requirement for the customer, or it's, if it's unable to find the product period, it will try to use the replenishment location directive and location and the replenishment work template to actually get the product from the top shelf, if it does exist on the top shelf and bring it to the pick location so we can sell it to the customer, pick it, right? The problem here is that the location directives from sales order and location directives from replenishment, they're somewhat disconnected, right? So the replenishment location directives does not honor your sellable days to the customer, right? So what that means that the system will try to replenish the, you know, the warehouse work, work will be generated to pick from the top, you know, to pick from that 500 move it to the pick and then try to sell it to the to the customer. The issue is this approach that at the point of picking, it will be too late, right? Because we already moved the product, but it's not good for the customers. So I'm gonna show you how the system's gonna behave in this scenario. So I'm gonna release to the warehouse, quantity one with uh, sellable days requirements. You can see that it's telling me that the work's been generated, right? So we can see that the work is coming from pick, right? Uh, However, if you look at the replenishment work, you also need to replenish it from bulk. We're moving the four, five, full 500 because the location directive here specifies that we're using fee for and we're only moving a full license plate, which makes sense. You're not gonna be replenishing partial pallets, right? So theoretically, this scenario is good so far, except we're not honoring our sellable days in replenishment. So I'm just gonna complete this work here. So we're moving that 500 to the pick area, right? So you can see that now we can actually proceed the picking for this uh, pick work, right? For quantity one that just been replenished for that 500 pallets. So if I'm gonna refresh my own hand, you'll see that the quantity changed. Now we have a 500 and a pick. Let's try to process that sales order transaction. So let's say, you know, the time was already spent moving that pallet. In some cases it might be time consuming because you require special equipment, as I said, right? So I'm gonna go to, my sales pick and I'm gonna enter my work ID and I'm gonna to try to pick it. And it's gonna ask me to confirm the location and then to confirm the license plate and the are trying to pick this one. And, uh, and you see the message, badge falls outside of the sellable date restriction. So this is my take. I think at this point it's too late to have this error message because the work has already been done and uh, What's the most confusing is the system lets you create the sales order work for this, right? So you kind of go through all the rules, create the sales order work, create the replenishment, but then when you actually try to pick that sales order work, it fails. So imagine if you are a fast paced uh, distributor and you have you know hundreds of these, or let's say even 50 of these, and you have all this work being done, but at the end you can't really pick it because the system is stuck, right? Uh, so before I go into the conclusions, 
So I'm going to go and uh, show you the version that we are using for this demo. So we are using update 27 and uh, I think this is one of the latest ones. The reason why I want to focus a little bit on the update because in previous versions, I think update 25 or 26, I can actually look up the version. I was working with a customer, it was an older version and the system behaved differently. And uh, the way it worked is that if uh, your replenishment fails to satisfy your sellable days restriction on the customer, the system will fail at your replenishment put. So under work uh, creation history, you'll see that not in this version, in the other version, you will see that the system will fail to put this product that your replenishment into the pick zone because this is me speculating. My understanding was that it fails, put it to the pick because it doesn't match the sellable days requirements, which makes sense. You can't really pick it afterwards because the sellable days restriction is there. So the workaround was is to actually create a separate location directive or the separate location directive on the put level, which would be something like, uh, I don't know, requires inspection or would use some sort of a unique location. Uh, let's say we can call it location XXX1. So the system would tell you to put the product into the XX1 location. So the workaround would be that anytime you see a replenishment that has an XXX location, you need to make sure that the replenishment will work for that customer. It's still a manual process, right? You still need to verify, but at least you have some sort of a trigger that this replenishment might fall behind, right? And even that, I don't think it's a real solution. There can be many cases where this will fail. So to end this video, I'm going to ask our audience to actually maybe suggest a solution or if you guys again seen this before, uh, you have seen workarounds or maybe this is something that's coming in the future from Microsoft, please let us know. Uh, I hope this video will sell you, save you some time during the implementation and you have the sellable days replenishment requirement from the customer. And don't forget to check when this video was produced. Again, this is 2019. Who knows? Maybe by the end of this year, Microsoft will come up with an update. So things might change, right? Just today, I noticed a new functionality. That hopefully, I'll be doing the video in a week or two. Location aging FIFO, location directive was not here before in the previous version, and I haven't seen any release notes from Microsoft. So again, D365 in some cases, always a surprise. Just uh, be patient. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.